Hello again, everyone, and welcome to video number nine in my Ansible series. And this just keeps getting better and better. In the previous video, I showed you just how much you can actually consolidate a playbook. We were able to consolidate a playbook down to one task. That was awesome. In this video, what we're going to look at is how to individualize our hosts. Because, you know, maybe we don't want Apache on all of our servers. Maybe only one of our servers is a web server. Maybe we have a DB server, we have a file server, and we want to basically run different things on different categories of servers. And that's what we are going to take a look at in this video. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Now off camera, I did actually make some changes to our playbook. I'll go ahead and show you right now what I've done. Now in the previous video, we were able to get this down to one task, like I mentioned. But for the purposes of this video, I went ahead and made it two tasks again. Basically one task for Ubuntu. As you can see here, I'm installing Apache 2 and the PHP mod as well. I'm updating the cache, I'm making sure that it's the latest version of the package, and I'm targeting Ubuntu specifically. And then the second play, I'm doing the exact same thing, but this time with CentOS. So go ahead and copy this down, pause the video if you need to do so, or go ahead and check out the wiki article in the description below this video. You could click on that link to go ahead and download this version of our playbook. So I'll go ahead and close out of here. So let's go ahead and check out our inventory file. And as you can see here, I have undid the changes that we have made in the previous video. In that video, we actually declared some variables here. We will revisit variables later in the series. I will show you the proper way to do this, which is host variables. So I went ahead and just removed those for now. We are back to the inventory file as it was before we added those variables in the previous video. So what I'm going to do is reorganize this a little bit here. First of all, I'm going to create a few groups. So first of all, web underscore servers. And I'm going to make this Ubuntu server here a member of that group. But what I'm also going to do is make the CentOS server a member of that group as well. Next, I'm going to add the .133 Ubuntu server to the db underscore servers group. And then finally, the last server here, I'm going to add to the file servers group, just like this. So now we are starting to get further into the inventory file and some of the other features that it offers us. And right now we are able to create groups, as you see here, and put each server in its own group. Now you can actually have a server be a member of multiple groups because maybe you have a test server, for example, that is a web server, but maybe the test server doesn't need an external database server. Since you're just testing, maybe that server is going to be in both. You can definitely do that. But for this particular video, I'm going to have each host in only one group just to keep it simple. So I'll go ahead and save this file. So what I'm going to do right now is copy our playbook to a new file name because our file name for the playbook is install Apache, but it's not just about Apache anymore. Now we are going to be doing some different things depending on what type of server it is that we're working with. So I will just make a copy of that and I will copy it to this name and I'm going to call it site.yml. You can call it whatever you want but this is a playbook to provision the entire site, so to speak. We'll just pretend that's the case. Anyway, we'll go ahead and edit the file and we'll make some changes. Now, what we have right here is host all. And as I mentioned earlier in the series, that is actually going to target all hosts, but we don't wanna do that anymore in general, but it is useful to have some tasks be targeted towards all and then other tasks be targeted towards specific servers. So what I'm going to do here is just create some new tasks. I'm going to leave host all for now. 
I'll do name. I'm going to call this task install updates and it's going to be targeted towards CentOS. I'm going to use DNF. That's the module for CentOS as we know. Let's do update underscore only. Set that to yes. We'll also do update cache. Set that to yes. And we only want to do this if Ansible distribution is equal to CentOS, just like that. And we're going to do something similar for Ubuntu as well. We'll use the apt module. Set upgrade to dist and update cache to yes. And for this, we only want to target Ubuntu, just like that. So now we still want to install Apache and PHP. So what I'm going to do is create a new section here. So right at the beginning of the line, and I'll just add a new line here just to make sure we have enough space. I want to run this section only against the web servers. We'll still need the become true, just like we already had in the previous one. We're going to set up some tasks. And we're going to basically leave the tasks that we have here, but we don't need the update cache anymore because we already took care of that further up. But otherwise, these tasks will be the same. And I'm going to go ahead and just go back here to the beginning. Let's walk through this to see what the heck I'm doing here. So first of all, we want to run some tasks against all of our servers. We don't care what group they're in, whether they're web servers, file servers, database servers, it doesn't matter. These are tasks that we want to execute on all of them. And when we are provisioning servers, we always want to make sure that all of the packages are up to date. And that's exactly what this is doing. So on our CentOS systems, basically it's going to go ahead and use update only and update cache with DNF, which is the CentOS way of installing updates. It's only going to do that with CentOS systems. And then we're going to do the same thing on Ubuntu. We're going to use upgrade dist with updating the cache. And we are only going to do that when the distribution is Ubuntu. So what this is going to mean is that when we provision our servers, they're immediately going to have all of the packages updated so that they start out with all of the packages well updated. And that's a great thing to do. You always want to make sure that all of your servers are up to date. Now here, in this section right here, instead of host all, we are targeting host web servers. So we only want to run these plays against the web servers and only two of our hosts, in my case, in this example, are configured as web servers. And for those, we want to basically install the Apache and PHP packages like we've been doing. And this is great because before this video, we've actually gone ahead and installed Apache on every single server. And while that might be okay if you are working in a shop where you only have web servers, that's almost definitely not the case that all of your servers are web servers. So you basically want to be able to target certain servers as certain things. So here we are only going to run these plays against the web servers. So just like before, we have a play for Ubuntu and we have a play for CentOS that's going to install Apache and PHP. So let's go ahead and save the file. So there really shouldn't be any changes here because there's nothing vastly different that we're doing in this playbook versus any of the others that we've done. But let's go ahead and run it to see whether or not we have any syntax errors and if it runs exactly as we think it should. So I'll recall the previous command here and we did change the name of the playbook. So let's go ahead and run it. We'll get back to the video in just a moment, but real quick, I want to mention my sponsor, Linode. Linode has been my infrastructure provider for quite a while now, and has just recently announced their own managed Kubernetes service. 
And this enables you to combine Linode's ease of use and simple pricing with the infrastructure efficiency of Kubernetes. With the Linode Kubernetes engine, you can get your infrastructure and workloads up and running in minutes instead of days and scale resources in real time to meet your infrastructure needs. And with Linode's managed Kubernetes engine, the pricing is simple. Only pay for what you use. And with Linode's 99.9% .9 uptime SLA and bundled transfer, you can significantly cut costs when compared to AWS, GCP, and Azure. Designed with the open source ecosystem of Kubernetes, the Linode Kubernetes engine supports integration with tools like Helm, operators, and more. To help you get started with Kubernetes, Linode gives you access to in-depth documentation, video tutorials, and webinars. So go ahead and sign up at promo.linode.com slash learnlinuxTV to get a $60, 60-day credit to test out LKE or any of Linode's other offerings. I appreciate Linode's continued support of Learn Linux TV. Now, let's get back to the video. And we can see that the output does look a bit differently, even though we didn't actually have any changes here. It actually went ahead and executed the plays differently than it did before. So if I scroll up here, let's go ahead and walk through the output. So first of all, it's gathering facts as it always does. And if I scroll down a bit, install updates CentOS. It's skipping the first three servers. Why? Well, because only the last one is actually a CentOS system. So you can see that it's skipping the ones that are not CentOS. Then here it's basically doing the reverse. It's skipping the CentOS system, and then it's executing the install updates play against the other three, because the other three are Ubuntu, and that's what we are targeting there. Now notice, if I scroll back up, it says play all. So gathering facts has always been done before, and that is part of all. But we also made the installation of updates part of all because we're targeting all servers for that. Now if we scroll down, we can see play web servers. Instead of play all, now we're actually targeting web servers and we're running these tasks down here, basically exactly as we wrote in the playbook. It's gathering facts for the web servers. And then it's going to install Apache, but it's only running that against two servers. The first one it's skipping that's sent to us because this is the Ubuntu version, so it's okay on this server here, which is the Ubuntu server. And then it basically just flips and does the same thing for CentOS, and now CentOS it says okay, because we already had those changes in place from a previous version of this playbook. Scroll all the way down here, we can see the number of tasks that were run, and nothing was changed. But if something happened like Apache being updated on either of the repositories for those distributions, then we would actually see a change here because we did mandate that the latest version be installed. We have no changes here because, well, again, we're just doing the same thing that we've always been doing. Now I'm going to make a very small change to that playbook. And what I'm going to do is change tasks to pre underscore tasks just like that. Now this is going to do absolutely nothing different for the purposes of this video but I do want to make you aware that this exists. Pre-tasks basically mandate that these tasks are going to be run or need to be run before anything else in the playbook. So if you ever get into a point where you are wanting things to happen in a specific order, then you also want to have a way to mandate that certain tasks always be run first before other plays. And that's what pre-tasks, that's actually what it does. But it's not going to be any different for us because Ansible is basically just executing the playbook from top to bottom. So the order isn't different. This is just something that we can get into when we get into roles later on in the series. But pre-task, just so you know, is again a way to mandate that some things be run earlier before anything else is run. And that's a great place to have the update plays that we have here because again, we want to basically start out with our packages fully up to date. So I'll save the file. And again, nothing is going to be different. As you can see here, it's again the same thing. Now let's go ahead and take this a step further. 
In our playbook file right now, we have a section here at the bottom that's targeting our web servers. That's all well and good, but what about the other servers? We want to also target those as well, don't we? So let's go to the end and add a new section. So what I'm going to do is do hosts db underscore servers become true then tasks So I basically am naming this task install MariaDB package. So I guess you could probably predict which package I'm going to install here. We'll use DNF. The name will be MariaDB. The state will be latest again, just like before. And then when Ansible distribution is sent to us. That package is named differently on Ubuntu. So again, we will install Ubuntu, just like that. We'll use apt. And the package on Ubuntu is named MariaDB-Server. Again, we want the latest version. And we'll do win Ansible distribution is equal to Ubuntu. So I will add configuration for the file server in a bit, but let's go ahead and run this first and see whether or not this works. Moment of truth. So now we can see that something did indeed change. And that makes sense. Right here, install MariaDB package. This is the section that's targeting DB servers. It's gone ahead and installed the MariaDB package for Ubuntu. And since we don't actually have any CentOS machines that are part of the DB servers group, this is never going to happen. But I basically added it here just in case that's something we do later. But anyway, we can see that it worked. It actually did install that package. So for example, if I go over here to server one, let's just check it with systemctl, status, MariaDB. We can see that it's running. It was successfully installed. And we can see that it has been running since 1236. The time on my clock is now 1237. So, you know, it is the one that we executed with Ansible. It went ahead and installed it for us. And we'll get into service management later in the series, but we can see that it is running, which is great because, well, we want to make sure that if we install a package, we are able to benefit from it. And CentOS is not going to automatically start services by default, so we'll get to that later. But this is how you check it manually if you are curious how to make sure that the changes that you have asked Ansible to carry out for you have been, well, carried out. So, so far, so good. Now back here on the workstation VM, we want to go ahead and edit that site.yml one more time. We'll go here to the bottom. We need to add a play for the file server. So what we're going to do is again host and we're going to target file servers just like that. We need become true because we do need to use sudo. And then tasks. Let's just go ahead and add one simple one. I'm going to use the package module because in this case, the name of the package is not actually different between CentOS and Ubuntu, which is pretty cool. Let's go ahead and save it. And of course, we will run it to make sure that it does work. So we can see here that the actual file server has just had a change made to it. 
And of course, it's the change that we wrote in the playbook to install the Samba package. Now, creating a file server is beyond the scope of this video. So we're not going to actually test that we are able to reach the Samba file server, share files with it, or anything like that. This is just to show you that you can differentiate hosts by, well, category basically, and put them in groups. So we were able to create several groups. So for example, I'll just bring up the inventory file again. We set up a group for web servers, DB servers, and file servers. And we split the four VMs that I've created into those groups so that way we can basically run different tasks on different types of servers, which is more akin to how things are actually going to be in the real world, because let's face it, all of your servers are going to have a different purpose. So there you go. I recommend that you play around with this a bit. Go ahead and create a different group. You can call it whatever you want and just make it do something else other than what I've shown you. So that way you can get some practice with groups. It's a very important concept to learn. And then once you have that down, I will see you in the next video as soon as I have that uploaded, if I don't already have that uploaded. So thanks for watching, and please like and subscribe if you haven't already done so, and I'll see you again real soon. Mm -hmm.